Hi guys, welcome back and if you're new to the channel, thanks very much for tuning in. This is going to be the third part in the series on kayak fishing for beginners. Now, if you've got this far, you've already taken into consideration everything that I've said in part one and two. And also you've taken into consideration things like where you're going to store your kayak, are you going to store it inside, or are you going to store it outside? And also you've taken into consideration how you're going to get your kayak to and from your house or where it's stored to your launch site. Now that be on your car, your SUV, your pickup truck. Hopefully you've taken all that into consideration before you've got to this stage in making your purchase for a kayak. Now, purchasing a kayak can be a bit of a minefield. There's hundreds of kayaks to choose from. But the first thing I will say straight away is, kayaks come in two forms. You get a sit inside kayak and you get a sit on top kayak. Sit inside kayaks are not purposely built for fishing, although you can fish from them. Sit on top kayaks are purposely built to fish from and it's your ideal fishing platform in the kayak. So now that we've established the correct type of kayak you're going to need for fishing is going to be a sit on top kayak. We can then go on to the fundamental things that you need to be thinking about before you make that purchase. Now a basic rule of thumb in kayak stability is the wider your kayak, the more stable it will be. The narrower your kayak, the less stable it will be. Now also taking these two factors into consideration, the wider your kayak, the more resistance that kayak's going to have going through the water. And therefore, it will go slower through the water and it may be more difficult to paddle. The narrower your kayak, the faster it will go through the water as it has less resistance. But it may be easier to paddle. Now that we've established the basic fundamentals of kayak stability, you now might be facing a further dilemma. Do you choose speed over stability or stability over speed? Now only you can make that decision of what you want out of your kayak. But that decision can also be determined by the type of fishing it is that you want to do. So if you've now decided on the type of fishing it is that you're going to be doing on your kayak, this may now determine the length of kayak you're going to need to do that fishing. For instance, if you're going to be fishing in, say, on rivers or small lakes, you're going to be needing a kayak that's quite manoeuvrable. And the shorter the kayak, the more manoeuvrable it will be. But if you've decided that you're going to be fishing on the ocean or in the sea, a longer kayak with less manoeuvrability is going to be more suited to fishing on the sea. And a longer kayak will handle waves much better than a smaller kayak. Now once you've decided on the length of kayak it is you're going to need for the type of fishing you're going to do, this next section is probably one of the most overlooked, I believe, when making a decision on purchasing a kayak. And it's one of the most crucial that's actually required in making that purchase. And that is the weight capacity of that kayak. Now I'm not talking about the weight of the kayak, although some kayaks can be quite heavy and that's something to be bear in mind when considering your own capability on lifting that kayak, whether it be for loading or unloading. But what I'm talking about is the maximum weight load that that kayak can take safely. Now all kayaks have a maximum weight capacity and when determining that weight capacity, that is your own body weight, considering the type of fishing that is you're going to be doing, what equipment you're going to be wearing on yourself, i.e. your clothing, some of that can be quite heavy, and your overall fishing tackle that you will take on that kayak. Also, some of the kayaks that are out there, they're only going to have a minimum amount of accessories. So accessories add weight to that kayak. So. If you're buying a kayak and it's got not got many accessories on it, think about the accessories you want to put on that kayak and then take that into consideration for the overall weight capacity. 
once you've determined that and you've got a sort of total weight you know weigh your fishing box estimate your fishing tackle your clothing be realistic with this guys and it's better that you buy a kayak that can handle your weight far more than the weight that's actually going to be in it now continue with the subject on maximum weight capacity of the kayak I mentioned way back in part one of this series on kayak fishing for beginners that I would share my experiences with you guys and mention some of the mistakes that I made fundamental mistakes now I spent a lot of research on my first kayak and the very first kayak I bought was an ocean kayak torque which was 13 and a half foot and I was going to be using that kayak for fishing in the sea fishing in the ocean now I bought this kayak second hand and I still did a lot of research I went on YouTube I tried to find as many reviews on the kayak as I could but I still overlooked the maximum weight capacity now just to give you a bit of background on a ocean kayak torque the ocean kayak torque came with a modular electric motor and it was battery powered now the combined weight of the battery that I used which was 90 amp hours and the modular electric motor they weighed 30 kilograms on their own that was 30 kilograms in the kayak before I even sat in the kayak without any fishing equipment now I'm quite a big bloke and I weigh 16 stone so as you can imagine with all my clothing on and the fishing accessories my fishing tackle that all added up to be a considerable weight especially when you take into account that the battery and electric motor weighed 30 kilograms on their own now just to make you aware guys that all sit on top kayaks should have drain holes in your kayak and they're usually strategically positioned where the water should drain away in your kayak even when you're sitting on the kayak on the water if there's any water in your kayak the water should drain away now you will get water coming over the bow of the kayak uh, if it's raining but all that water should drain away now a lot of people get bungs for their kayaks and bung the holes up which is just like a little rubber plug now those drain holes like I said are designed to let water drain away and one of the key indicators that a kayak is not handling its weight capacity is if you're in the water you've got all your fishing gear with you and you've got bungs in your kayak and you take those bungs out if you get water coming into your kayak through your drain holes then that weight capacity has been compromised now the biggest thing with that is if you get free flow water in your kayak that kayak becomes unstable because the water flows about in the kayak now if you're in any weather or you know in a situation where there's water in your kayak and it becomes unstable then the chances of capsize are greatly increased so that was the first kayak and like I said it turned out to be a, a big mistake and there was times in the kayak that I did feel unsafe and that's probably one of them because the stability of the kayak was compromised now I don't know if any of you guys have seen my fishing videos but I haven't actually done a video on that kayak because I didn't start videoing until I got my second kayak which is a kayak that I have now but even on like my first sort of fishing videos uh, with this kayak that I have now I mentioned the stability of my first kayak I didn't feel all that safe in it compared to how I feel in this kayak so as I said I bought that kayak second hand and I bought it on eBay and to be honest it was a rare find because those kayaks stopped being produced way back in 2011 and like I said I only started this sport uh, just over a year ago and to have that modular electric motor and all that in it it was quite rare so I was lucky enough that I got my money back in fact I got a little bit more back than I actually paid for it the time I added my little accessories and all that and I sold that with the kayak guy came to buy the kayak and I was honest with him told him the reasons why I was selling it and lucky enough the guy that came to buy it he was only a little guy 
and that weight capacity, the maximum weight load for that kayak, would have handled him a lot better than it handled me, and he'd be a lot stabler in that kayak. So now that we've covered all the main elements you should be looking out for when purchasing your kayak, the next thing I'm going to come on to is price. Now, most of you out there, especially if this is your first kayak, you'll have a budget. Uh, if you haven't got a budget, you know, and money's no object, then that's fine. You'll be able to find something that's really good for you, uh, as long as you do your homework. Uh, it doesn't matter what kayak you go for, you should do your homework, do your research, and you're going to get the kayak that's right for you. But hopefully what I've mentioned will help you guys find the kayak that's suitable, and you won't make the same mistakes that a lot of us have made in buying your first kayak. Now... What I would recommend being your first kayak is I'd buy a budget kayak. Now when I say budget, I don't mean a budget, cheap, brand new kayak that only costs a couple of hundred pounds. Now I'm not saying that those kayaks are no good, they're just not good for everyone. If you're serious about your fishing and you want your fishing kayak fishing to go a long way, I can guarantee guys, if you buy one of those cheap brand new kayaks, it's just not going to live up to your expectations and you're going to get rid of it and it's just going to be a waste of money because you're going to buy it brand new you're not going to get the money back that you paid for that so what I would recommend you do is with your budget in mind I would look for a second-hand kayak now just like I said a wee minute ago I bought a second-hand kayak and I made the mistake but the reason I'm doing this video is to help you make the decision and the things to look for. Always do your homework and you can't go wrong. Now when you're thinking about second hand, the reason I say second hand is you can get a really good quality second hand kayak. You know, you can find them on eBay, maybe in your local ads. Now the quality kayaks, they do come around, they're just not as often as the, the cheap NAF ones, but you will be able to find one if you if you look for them and be patient about it because if you're not patient you're going to make a rash decision so look for a quality kayak it's good brand it's popular it's well known and because of that you'll be able to get a plethora of information go on facebook join some kayak clubs ask questions tell them the type of fishing it is you do and the type of kayak that you're looking at I guarantee someone will have had those kayaks and obviously you've got YouTube you can find nearly every kayak under the sun someone will have done a review on it and it'll just give you an idea of what you can do with that kayak as well the good thing about quality second-hand kayaks is when it comes to selling it and you're maybe upgrading to your next kayak more often than not you'll get your money back and like me if you sell it at the right time you might get more than what you actually paid for it so my advice, being your first kayak, is get a good quality, well-known kayak, but buy it second-hand. Again, even if you are buying second-hand, uh, and you join some of these uh, Facebook groups and all that, you might be able to join groups that's in your area, and you know some of the guys may be willing to let you try out a kayak that they've got, and especially if you've never been on a kayak, or you know uh, it's something you've never done before, much better to try something before you buy it and you know even if you're buying brand new certainly try and buy uh, try before you buy uh, unfortunately here in the UK there's not many places that actually do it so you're you are relying on information from others you know from Facebook YouTube etc uh, but the biggest thing is do your homework now this is going to be the last episode uh, in this series in the man cave hopefully and to be honest, it's been really difficult talking to you guys on the camera. The reason it's difficult is, you know, I've not had any, many pictures, there's not been much practical, but that's because this has been, it's about a mental process and, a, and forethought that goes in to purchasing a kayak. Okay, series one was about the pros and cons of uh, having a kayak, and you, like I say, there's more pros and cons. It'll open up your fishing experiences in my book. Uh, Series 2 was obviously about your physical capability and making sure that you could handle a kayak safely. And 
like I said, it's been really difficult talking to you guys. I didn't want to put, especially talking about different kayaks and lengths and widths, I didn't want to put a picture up and you think, well, he's recommending that to me. So that's really one of the reasons I didn't have any sort of uh, pictures or any sort of practical thing in this section. From here on in, it'll all be about the practical side of it. You know, going over the safety equipment, uh, going over what you should think about when you're putting accessories on your kayak. So that's what's going to happen in the future, guys. But I really hope you've enjoyed the videos. And like I said before, if you've got more experience out there, guys, and there's something I said that you don't agree with, leave a comment. It'll only help the viewers that I've maybe said something wrong. And it'll help me as well, because I'm still a beginner. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It'll help out a lot. Thanks very much, guys, and stay safe.